The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. Exhibit A, Lucky Strike. Fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. And year in, year out, always. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows. Colonel Hart Shoemaker, ace tobacco auctioneer of Lebanon, Kentucky, has sold over 300 million pounds of tobacco leaf. Recently, he said, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy real quality tobacco, fine, ripe, mild tobacco. Yes, I've seen them do it at thousands of auctions. For my own cigarette, I picked Lucky's. At market after market, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts like Colonel Shoemaker can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Remember, LSMFT, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, for many years as an announcer, it has been my privilege to introduce a number of very important people. But never have I felt the pride that is glowing within me today as I introduce the gracious and beloved star of our show. Well. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me extreme pleasure to present to you a man whose very benevolence has earned for him the admiration, respect, and everlasting love of millions. And here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was the most beautiful introduction I've ever received. The most touching. I mean, whatever made you think of it? There are only 27 more shopping days till Christmas. <laughs> What? And I don't want any more of those lousy shoelaces. <laughs> oh, Don. Don, you didn't like the shoelaces I gave you last Christmas? No, I didn't. Well, what was the matter with them? I mean, were they too long or too short or, or what? Well, Jack, now I've been with you 13 years, and I didn't think a pair of shoelaces was an appropriate Christmas gift. Oh. Well, Don, you silly boy. I mean, if you didn't like the shoelaces, you could have exchanged them for a box of Kleenex or, or dental floss or something. Anyway, Don, I do appreciate the fact... Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. I'll, I'll take it, boy. Just a minute. Here's a tip for you. Yes, sir. I wonder who this telegram... You can go, boy. I gave you your tip. But, Mr. Benny, these ration stamps aren't good anymore. <laughs> Don't be so sure. <laughs> hey, mm. My bicycle was paid for. I'd punch him right in the nose. <laughs> Go be nice to people. Jack, who's the telegram from? Uh, wait till I open it. Well... Dear Jack, please be at the studio tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock for further discussions. Signed, Jack Warner. Discussions? About what? Uh, didn't I tell you, Don, the Warner brothers have finally decided to make that picture. You know, the story of my life. It's going to be... Um... Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. I, I, Mary, I've got wonderful news. <laughs> Sorry I <laughs> did that. I mean, I've known you so many years. <laughs> uh, Mary, I've got... I've got wonderful news. Warner Brothers is going to make the story of my life. Gee, that's swell. What gave them the idea? Well, after I made the horn blows at midnight, they received thousands of letters demanding the life of Jack Benny. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how they meant that. Anyway, uh, 
they've done a lot of work on the story. You mean they finished the script already? Yes, Mary, and it's going to be great. You know, there's a lot of action in the opening scene. You see, in the opening scene, I've just been born, and as the doctor leaves the house, my father shoots him in the back. <laughs> really very exciting. Say, Jack, when they made the Jolson story, they had Larry Parks play the part of Al Jolson. Now, in your picture, who's going to play you? Well, we don't know yet, but to portray the real me, they're considering Errol Flynn. <laughs> I guess it's the way I've lived, you know what I mean? <laughs> then, there's, then there's also the possibility that they might use Clark Gable. Well, Jack, as long as it's a story of your life, why don't you play it yourself? Well, we thought of that, Mary, but we felt we needed someone who was attractive to women, you see. Oh, Jack, you're just as attractive to women as Clark Gable any day. Well, I wouldn't say that, Mary. I mean, that's sweet of you, but you see, Clark is a pretty handsome guy, you know. Oh, you're just being modest. You don't hear women talk about you like I do. Now, Mary, stop, will you? I'll ad- I mean, I'll admit I'm not homely, but... Uh... But uh, what, uh, what did the women say about me? You asked for it, brother. <laughs> Never mind. If you want to know something, Smarty, it wasn't so long ago I had dozens of girls all around me. That's when you were playing with Phil Spitalny. <laughs> Phil Spitalny, Phil Spitalny. He still owes me two weeks' salary. Anyway, I... Say, Mr. Benny, when I sing my song, do you mind if oh, I... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Mr. Benny, when I sing my song, do you mind if did I... You, did you just get in? Yeah. Mr. Benny, when I sing my song, do you mind if how, I... How, uh, how do you feel, kid? Fine. Good. I broke my leg this morning, but I'm all right now. <laughs> Dennis, uh, just go ahead and sing your song. Well, aren't you going to ask me how I broke my leg? No, I'm not. Now go ahead with your song. My mother was right. You don't want me to get laughs. <laughs> Not on silly things like that. Now, go ahead and sing. Okay, but do you mind if I dedicate the song to my new girl? Oh, you have a new girl? What's her name? Thelma Gray, Hollywood 6265. Oh. Dennis, you didn't have to give Mr. Benny her phone number. I might as well. He'll force it out of me later. (laughs) Now, wait a minute, kid. When did I ever threaten you to get a girl's telephone number? Remember in New York when you took me to the top of the Empire State Building? Jack, you didn't. He held me over the edge by my suspenders. (laughs) Well, you're lucky you didn't go out with that girl. You've still got your watch. (laughs) But this girl's different, Mr. Benny. Oh, you, uh, you really like her, eh, Dennis? Yeah. Last week was her birthday, so I took her around to all the clubs. We went to Ciro's, the Macambo, Slapsy Maxie's. Really? How those places stay in business, I'll never know. We were the only ones in there. Dennis, what, uh, what night did you go? Oh, night! <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, go ahead and sing, kid. Okay. Hollywood, 6265. I must remember that. This time I'll leave my watch home. Your heart sing how lucky you are. There's so many heartaches in this world of ours. Sometimes a dream will come true. Is in love with you. That's the greatest of blessings by far. And you don't know how lucky you are. Does your 
her heart sing how lucky you are when the one that you love is in love with you that's the greatest of blessings by far And you don't know How lucky you You are sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. Say, Mary. Aren't you going to ask me how I broke my leg? <laughs> no, I'm not, and stop being silly. Now, what did I start to say? Oh, yeah, you know, Mary, I've been giving it a lot of thought, and I don't know just who would be the right one to play me in the life of Jack Benny. Well, how about Van Johnson? Well, he's good, Mary, but he, he isn't quite old enough, you know. How about Cornell Wilde? No, no, he isn't old enough either. How about John Wilkes Booth? <laughs> oh, stop. John Wilkes Booth. He broke his leg, too. Dennis. Aren't you going to ask me how? No, I'm not. But, Mary, I think... Gee, I don't know. Hiya, Jackson. What's that dreamy look on your face? Oh, hello, Phil. I'm thinking. You know, Warner's is going to make a picture, the story of my life, and we're trying to figure out... Who would be the right personality to play me? Why don't you play it yourself, Jackson? You're one of the greatest actors in show business. Huh? And coming from me, you know what that means. Yeah, there are only 27 more shopping days till Christmas. <laughs> but getting the right guy is really a problem. Hey, Jackson, I got an idea. Why don't you let me play the part? I'd be terrific. I'm handsome. I got personality, sex appeal. What more do you want? Well, Phil... Think I... it over, Dad. I'm alive. I'm sharp. I'm a sort of a Mickey Rooney with just enough Roddy McDowell to hold me down. <laughs> Phil, uh, Philzy boy, do you think for one moment that I'd let you play... Do you think for one moment I'd let you play the lead in a picture as important as this one? You'd be drinking all the time. What's wrong with that? What? You made the horn blows at midnight and you were sober. <laughs> Not after the preview. <laughs> anyway, Phil. Hello, Livy. How you done? Hello, Phil. Hiya, Dennis. How you feel, kid? I broke my leg this morning, but I'm all right now. Dennis. Just call me John Wilkes Booth. Dennis, keep quiet, will you? <laughs> now, Phil. Phil, I hate to be the one to suggest it, you see, but it's time for a number from your corny band. Corny band? Apparently you haven't heard. Heard what? We were invited to go to England and play for the royal wedding. The royal wedding? Yes, sir, right in Birmingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, that's Buckingham. If there's a buck in it, you'll know it. <laughs> You're darn right. Now, come on, Phil, let's have a band. Number. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Don't you think it's about time we do a commercial? Don, we're not going to do a commercial this week. Go ahead, Phil. But, Jack... Don, I'm running this show. Go ahead, Phil. But, Jack, the quartet worked on it all week. I don't care if they did. Go ahead, Phil. And there's a part in it where you play the violin. Hold it, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what were you saying, Don? Well, the sportsmen are going to do the poet and peasant overture, and there's a place in it where you do a violin solo. Well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I had no idea this was going to happen. Gosh, this is really a surprise. I'm surprised. Then button your shirt and take out your violin. <laughs> okay, Don, uh, when do I come in? Just watch the boys. They'll give you your cue. Good. The Poet and Peasant Overture. Take it, boys. <laughs> Oh, lucky 
this race will always be this close for me. Now? Yes. Now? Yes. Now? Yes, yes, yes. That's a cigarette for me. My hockey stick is the one you will like. Every fool and speedy Rixie, they're from Kentucky. They smoke a lucky. They're so round and firm and fully. They are so fully back. Yes, you will like a lucky strike. commercial was really wonderful. It really was. And thanks for putting a part in it for me. I mean, the boys were just great, and the violin solo was out of this shirt. I mean, out of this shirt. <laughs> and by the way, kids, before I forget it, uh, next Thursday on Thanksgiving, I want you all to come over to my house for a turkey dinner. Turkey? Gee, I wonder if I could have one of the legs. Sure, kid. Why? I broke mine this morning. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. Hey, Jackson, are you sure it's going to be a turkey? Of course I'm sure. Why? Well, last year you said you ran over a turkey, and when we bit into it, it turned out to be a buzzard. <laughs> well, it's a real turkey this time, isn't it, Mary? Yeah, I was with Jack when he bought it. That's right. In fact, yesterday I called him and suggested that he throw a Thanksgiving party for the whole gang. He must have been in a good mood because he went for the idea right away. Well, Mary, I'm glad you called, and it's a good suggestion. Huh? Fine, hurry over and we'll go shopping. Goodbye. Oh, Rochester. Yes, sir. Where have you been? Out in the garage trying to fix up the car. When you hit that truck last week, you bent the axle. Did you fix it? Uh-huh, but I had a lot of trouble. Trouble? Yeah, when I loosened the nut that holds the axle, the lights fell off. <laughs> oh. So I took a nut off the rear door to fix the lights and the steering wheel fell off. <laughs> Gee. Then I took off the wire that holds the radiator and used it to tighten the steering wheel. And the radiator fell off? No, the fenders. <laughs> All four of them? All five of them. Five? We only have four fenders. How about the one we hold over our head when it rains? <laughs> I thought we used the side door for that. No, we use the side door to close the trunk in the back. <laughs> oh, yes. Gee, I must have hit that truck harder than I thought. Say, boss, when are they gonna come out with those new cars with the motors in the rear? In 1948. Well, congratulations, you're a year ahead of them. <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean the motors in the back of my car? About 10 feet. <laughs> oh, stop making things up. Now, Rochester, I'm gonna have the gang over Thursday for Thanksgiving dinner. What's in the refrigerator? The morning paper, a magazine, and your glasses. What? When that little light goes on, you ain't wasting it. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I mean food for Thanksgiving. Well, we've got everything except a turkey. You want me to go out and buy one? No, Miss Livingston is coming over, and we're going to... Well, that must be her now. So long, Rochester. We'll be back in about an hour. Gee, Mary, it's such a nice day. I'm glad we decided to walk to the market. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad Thanksgiving will be here soon. It's one of our nicest holidays. Yeah, and this year we should all be so thankful. I know I am. Gee, when I wake up in the morning, I hear the birds singing. I've got the beautiful moonlight at night. I get all the fresh air I need, all the sunshine I want. So far, it hasn't cost you a dime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mary, look. Hey, Mary, look, look over there. Those boys playing football. Hey, Joey, kick it to me now. See, they're nice kids, Mary. You know, the bigger one is Stevie Kent. His folks live on the corner. 
Every time I go out for a walk, I stop and talk with them. Hey, Stevie, throw the ball over here. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Here it comes. Look out, I think it's too high. You have to run for it. Faster. You better jump for it. Wow, what a catch. Say, hey, that was a good catch. I got to hand it to you, Mary. <laughs> How, uh, how did you do it? I don't know, but you can buy me a new girdle for Christmas. <laughs> okay, you know, Mary, UCLA could have used you yesterday. <laughs> yes, sir. Say, Mr. Benny, this is my friend, Joey. Hello, Joey. Hello, Mr. Benny. You know, Joey, Mr. Benny was All-American fullback when he played football for Yale. <laughs> Yale? And he broke the 100-yard dash record when he was in the Olympic Games. Gee whiz. Jack, did you tell Lee's... And Mr. Benny pitched two no-hit games in the World Series. <laughs> when he was with the New York Yankees. The Yankees? Oh, I was just lucky, that's so. <laughs> all. Say, Mr. Benny, tell Joey about the time you knocked out Jack Dempsey. <laughs> Oh, it was nothing, you see, it, it happened in the first round. We were mixing it in the center of the ring when suddenly Dempsey caught me with a powerful right hook to my chin. It shook me a little, I realized he was dangerous, so I, I decided to end it quickly. I shot two lefts to his midsection, crossed a right to the jaw, and down he went. I didn't mean to hit him so hard. He, you know, he was, he was out for over an hour. Gosh. Well, so long, kids. We gotta get going. You know, Mary, I was just... Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, look, Mary, I only tell the kids stories like that because it helps them if they, you know, if they have a hero to look up to. Some hero. Anyway, I, I just tell the kids harmless little stories. I don't, I don't exaggerate too much. Oh, look, there's, there's little Georgie Foster. Isn't he cute? He's only four. Look at him. Hello, Georgie. Hello, Mr. President. <laughs> oh, brother. Mary, I never told him that. He's just ad-libbing. Come on, here. here. Here's the market. Let's see. Oh, there's the poultry department over there. Come on, Mary. Okay. And Jack, remember what you promised. This time, you're gonna get a nice big turkey, not like the last one you got. There was nothing small about that turkey. Go on, you didn't have the heart to chop its head off. You beat it to death in a badminton game. <laughs> Mary. And I got stuck with a part that went over the net last. <laughs> Mary, stop trying to switch old Joe, will you? <laughs> now, uh, let's walk over to the counter and see... Hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Kessler. Mr. Kessel, what are you doing behind the meat counter? Oh, I'm helping out here for the holidays. Oh, you're, uh, you're, just, you're just working here temporarily. Yes, huh? until my boss gets back from the wedding. The wedding? In London? They had one there, too. <laughs> yes, yes, last Thursday. Oh. Well, look, Mr. Kitzel, I want to buy a turkey. Are they, are they very expensive? Expensive. <laughs> you mean, uh, you mean they're that high? Uh, come here a minute. Huh? Step closer. Do you know that Turkish are, what, what Turkish are selling for today? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, if you knew, you'd be nervous too. Come a little closer. What? Eighty cents a pound. Well, why, why do you have to whisper it? I don't want the turkey should get hammy. <laughs> oh. 
80 cents a pound, that's a lot of money for turkeys. See, si, they got to live too. <laughs> I suppose so. Say, Jack, while you're getting the turkey, I better shop around and get some things for the stuffing. I think I have everything at home, Mary. Well, what about cracker crumbs? Oh, I got plenty. There. Stale bread? Two loaves I've got. Oysters? One can. Sage? 38. What? <laughs> Oh, I thought you said something else. Yes, we, uh, we have everything. Well, Mr. Benner, what's your pleasure if I can be so accommodating? Well, I'd like to get a live turkey, about 25 pounds. The live turkeys are over there, down by the end of the counter. Oh, yes, yes. I think I'll take that one on the right. You know, it looks nice and plump. Who down your glasses? That's my wife. <laughs> oh, yes. I wish I could get 80 cents a pound for her. <laughs> what? Nothing, I'm daydreaming. <laughs> now, Mr. Kitzel, what would you suggest? Well, if you want a nice life, Toiki, what about this one over here? <laughs> Say, Jack, this one's nice and plump. I've seen turkeys look plump, and they're all full of feathers. I'm going to feel this one myself. Hold still, turkey. <laughs> You and your cold hands. <laughs> well, Mary, Mary, what do you think about it? Well, it looks all right. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't have the heart to kill it. <laughs> oh, just look at its eyes. The same color as mine. Sultry summer blue. <laughs> oh, Jack, stop being so sentimental. You've already given up eating strawberries because they remind you of Phil Harris's eyes. Mary, Mr. Kittle, how much does this turkey weigh? About uh, 36 pounds. My scale is broken. Oh, oh, well, I'll weigh it on that scale over there by the door. Come here, turkey. That's a good girl. Come on, Mary, we'll go over the scale. Now, hold still, turkey. Mary, put in a penny. Okay. Oh, look, Jack, a card came out. Yeah, what does it say? You weigh 36 pounds, and you ain't long for this world. <laughs> There's a picture of Fred Allen on the other side there. <laughs> well, that's much too big. Oh, Mr. Kitzel. Your pleasure. This turkey's too big. How much does this one weigh, this one right here? I think 29 pounds. Aren't you sure? Wait a minute, I'll check. Oh, Hattie, how much does this turkey weigh? 29 pounds, but I'll check. Hey, Joe, how much does this turkey weigh? 29 pounds, but I'll check. Hey, Herman, how much does this turkey weigh? 29 pounds, but I'll check. Hey, Sam! All right, all right, I believe you. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute, but first... Quality of product is essential to continuing success. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. Remember what happens at the tobacco auctions? Year in, year out, at market after market, independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows. Mr. Carl Hartfield of Greensburg, Kentucky, has been working as an independent tobacco buyer for the last 29 years. Recently, he had this to say. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Ripe, prime leaf that's got real smoking quality. I've smoked Lucky's for over 28 years. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Good night, folks. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.